tonight I want to begin with a number, $270 billion. If you were a country that lost $270 billion because of one enemy, what would you do? Declare a war, I'm guessing. But that's not happening in this case. These numbers are from India. This loss was caused by climate change. In 2022, India lost 8% of its GDP to climate change. That's around $270 billion. And going forward, it will be worse. Climate change is bleeding India, so much so that now the country's top court has weighed in. That's India's Supreme Court. It says Indians need protection from climate change. The court has delivered a landmark verdict linking climate change to fundamental rights. And this is a big step forward, not to mention very important. India faces a lot of extreme weather events, floods, droughts, heat waves, and long periods of smog. People tend to label these as acts of God and live with them. But they should not have to. India's Supreme Court says this goes against our right to life, a right guaranteed in the Constitution of India. So by extension, we also have the right to a clean environment. And we must get protection from climate change. The court was hearing a matter related to an endangered bird. And through this verdict, it has expanded the scope of our fundamental rights. Now, these are rights that every Indian is entitled to, and they're guaranteed by the Constitution. The right to speak freely and express opinion, the right to equality for all genders, the freedom to practice your religion, and the ability to approach the courts and seek justice. We have all of this. Now, climate change protections are part of this list. The court has recognized the sweeping effects of climate change. Air pollution can make you sick. Droughts can hamper access to food and water. Floods and storms can uproot communities. And even if you feel that you're not directly affected by any of these events, it will eventually come to you. Because climate change also hurts the economy. Consider what's happening right now. An intense heat wave is sweeping most parts of the country. It is expected to last till June. And that's very bad news for Indians because half of our working population works outdoors. That's some 49% of Indian workers, more than 230 million people. They work outdoors in India. Can they survive this intense heat? The human body can operate best in temperatures below 40 degrees Celsius or 104 degrees Fahrenheit. Anything beyond this is extreme heat, in which the human body may stop functioning optimally and lose its ability to deal with the heat. In the current heat wave, the mercury has already crossed 40 degrees in several parts of India. Add to that the fact that these people are working outdoors for long hours every day. This is testing the limits of human endurance. This poses a serious risk to health. So what are the governments doing? Well, they're issuing advisories for now. Multiple state governments have advised citizens to avoid the extreme heat. India's health ministry has done the same. They've issued a familiar list of do's and don'ts. Avoid going out in the afternoon. Avoid activity in the sun. Remain indoors until 4 p.m., which is all very well. The problem is a lot of people cannot afford to do that, especially workers in the informal sector. They must keep working to feed their families. But going forward, even this may not be an option. Here's what the World Bank has said about heat waves. It says the world will lose 80 billion jobs by 2030, all because of heat waves. 80 million. And out of these, 34 million jobs will be in India. 34 million lost jobs. Meanwhile, the financial cost is already mounting. In 2021, India lost over $150 billion due to heat waves. This is across key sectors of the economy. India's central bank has also expressed concerns. That's the RBI, the Reserve Bank of India. In a recent report, the RBI said there is a direct link between climate change and inflation. Let me explain how. Number one, extreme weather events can impact agricultural production, disrupt the flow of essential goods, and, and cause prices to shoot up. Number two, extreme weather reduces the productivity levels of the workforce. And number three, climate-induced destruction can strain the finances of both households and businesses. So whichever way you look at it, climate change is hurting you. And we need policy intervention to protect people from it, which is why the order from India Supreme Court is welcome. It's a much-needed call to action. 